Hi guys, I'm Jay and this is Vroom Room. Welcome back to the channel. This is the folk section of the Honda DeVille. Uh, just, just, this is how I do things. It's not an endorsement or saying that it's the proper way to do things. It's how I do things. Uh, there are ways much better than the way I'm doing it. So don't take it as gospel. If you want to follow it, it's at your own risk. But, you know, this is, it works for me. So I'm quite happy to get on with it and do it this way. So enjoy the video. If you do, please like, share, subscribe and, uh, well, let's see how this bit goes. And so it gets down to this. The forks need doing. And I'm going to do a timed refit of the forks. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to time all of it. Start stopwatch when I get my tools out. But this will involve also included in the time. Taking the wheel off and the mudguard. Uh, we'll do all of it so we're timed a lot and uh, we'll see how it goes so I'm going to start the clock in a moment right so I'm starting the timer now but before I do this is a big shout out to Fiona because she said in my previous video she missed my pink crocs so there you go that's just for you uh, and let's get started That's two. So I'm showing uh, 23 minutes 42 seconds. Not bad. Let's have a tidy up and then uh, go in and start stripping these folks. Uh, just a very quick word of caution with this. Although I've had a bit of a laugh and messed about getting those forks off in the quickest time I could, uh, including getting the tools. Take your time if it's the first time you've done it and uh, make sure you know where all the bolts go. Take pictures if you need to and uh, don't rush it like I did. But um, I've done this a couple of times now, so I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> we hope. Uh, so yeah, back to the video. So I'm trying to do as much of this from memory as possible. And I've just cleaned up that leg, which I haven't timed because why would I? Um, two major bits here that can get a little bit tricky. One is the bolt at the top. Uh, that really I should have loosened while it was in situ in the bike. But I've got, as you've seen, quite a big uh, impact driver. So I'm not, um, <laughs> these last words, not envisioning any problems with that. And the other one that can be a real pain is right up there. Uh, so those two need to come out on each fork uh, and well, it's nice now that one looks the dirty one and that's the clean one um, but we'll, uh, we'll stick it in with the impact driver and hopefully that will all come off without any problems but we'll, we'll see in a sec because uh, I want to try and get at least one of these done in this particular session so I'll go and find me bits and then we'll uh, carry on with the clock well, I did do the first one and I recorded it, but the audio was absolutely cack. So, luckily, I've got another one. So, uh, I'm going to do this one. And uh, 
you know to me actually get this one done slightly quicker because I've done the first one so I know all, all of my mistakes are so let's crack on and see so the timer is running I'm going to remove the top nut I'm going to remove the bottom nut let's do in situ on the bike so because you get a lot more purchase on the bolts unless you've got one of these you have doesn't matter where you do it because it does the work for you and the hole at the bottom is just about big enough to get the bolt out so i'm just going to stick that down there it's nice and safe and we're going to turn it around and there's our oil coming out And this one is um, got a lot more oil than the other one. We'll just wait for that to finish. Be scratching the chrome so that's over enough and um, with that done I can just remove the top bolt now there is an order to put stuff back so obviously when you take it apart make sure you take note of what goes where Just drop the uh, the top bolt there, and we've got an insert there. Then we should have a washer inside, which is there, and then we've got the spring. With the spring, make sure that the more compressed part of it is at the bottom, and this will create some oil as you bring it out so just be a little bit careful where you do this I'm just making sure the t-shirt rag just picks up the oil so I'm going to give that a clean to get as much old oil off of it as possible and the weight of the oil going back into it is going to be 10w So with that nice and clean, it goes down, remember, coil then goes in first. Right, so, because I don't trust the oil coming out, I'm going to get over the thing and I'm just going to leave my hand over the bottom, just to make sure I don't drop it. And this is the part screws in down the bottom so I'm just going to put that on the rag give it a twist give that a bit more of a clean in a moment and then we're just going to just hold it up see if there's any more oil in there and there's a trickle still coming out now we need to take the dust cover off Sure the screwdriver should just pop out. That's an easy. What I did find yesterday is I couldn't find my tool for putting in the new seal, which was a real pain. Hopefully this side won't be as obstinate. That's a good word. There's my clip. And that's it. The two parts are ready to come apart. So how do we do it? Well, 
try and do this in front of you, but it might not work because I might need to just turn around and do it. But you just grab it, give it a tug. That bang in is just against the seal, so it's going to come out. But you do have to give it a little bit. So we're going to give it a lot now, just to, because doing it gently isn't going to work. And this is how I normally do it, is... And it doesn't work. And it's starting to move. Just refusing to do that last little bit. And that's breaking out. I think one more should do it. And there we go. So, first of all, there's a tiny little insert in here. Look at that. It's very important you put that back in. So, I'm going to leave it in there for now because I'm going to clean it. And then the seal can come out. Not forgetting the washer. So, the washer, the seal, and then in like that. So those are all of our parts and now I'm just looking at the copper inserts for damage and they both look fine so what we'll do now is just give that a clean get as much of the old oil off as possible ready to go back so already we're preparing for the rebuild and we are on 13 minutes it's not bad Whew. you're not sure how this comes apart and take pictures or write notes if you're doing it is very important that it goes back in the correct order. Right, so because I've got to move away and clean these bits, I'm going to stop the video there. I will come back and say how long it's taken me to just get the cleaning done. I wouldn't expect more than about five minutes, but it's um, I need a stick and a couple of other bits just to uh, make sure it's spotless before we put it all back together. So I'll come back to you in a minute. So with that done, use my stick. I don't know if you can see that, that's absolutely spotless now as is the inside of the fork uh, so reassembly exactly the same as the assembly the only part that's going to be a pain in the bum is going to be putting the seal back in because uh, like I said I can't find any seal at all because my shed hates me and every time I go looking for a part it deliberately hides stuff from me with my tools so yeah Already we're getting some purchase on there. 
and this is where the old saw will come into play because we'll just slide the old saw over the top like that and because I can't find my tool I'm going to rough it That's now the old seal is now level with the top of the stanchion, which is good. It means it's going in nice and square. Just be careful if you have got a tool, get one. It's going to be so much easier than what I'm doing now. Yep, that's going in, but slow going. So rather than speed this up, I'll turn it off there for a second and we'll just uh, pick it back up in a moment and I'll let you know how long this takes because uh, yes, they did take quite a while. If I had the tool, it'd be done by now. So once again, get the tool. This is just because I can't go off to wait for the tool. So I'm going really old school with this, but I don't recommend it. Well, actually that wasn't as bad as yesterday's. So um, it only took about another 10 minutes off of camera but um, you'd have it done in seconds if you had the right tool so once that's done you do need to put the circlet back in once the circlet's in then you can put your dust cover on oh a bit sniffly today Right, so that feels good, which is very nice. We know our inserts in the bottom, and then we can start the assembly. So, because this is in the garden on the grass, I'm just going to take any moisture and chip off of the parts I'm putting back in and give them one last clean as they're doing that. So, that's ready. Home, which is brilliant. Whew. And so with that in any time. So next, normally, would be putting your oil back in. As that's not going to happen till tomorrow, I'm just going to put this bit back in the top just to keep everything in place. And then I'll stick the bolt back in the bottom. Uh, and I'll talk it up tomorrow once I've got the oil. Right, so that's on enough. So last thing to do is just to stick our bolt back in the bottom. thread there so that's good so I need is some more socket and we just give that a tiny little tap in which is great and that's it so we'll come back tomorrow once the oil's delivered um, that wasn't too bad. It was easier than the, uh, the first one, which was proven to be a bit of a pain. 
but really cannot stress enough the that tool it's like two halves of a clamshell or a clamshell two halves yes clamshell you just put it around the chrome part the fork you just bang it down and it takes the, the seal back in and it's so easy and what I've done there just made the process look so hard and I didn't need to do that but what you can see even then you know there's there's a tiny bit of rust at the top which is above the plunge line for the uh, for the fork but I will be cleaning that up before it goes back on uh, but because I was very careful there's no marks on there at all uh, from putting that seal in if you use a normal hammer or you use something metal you're gonna damage these so you have been warned be careful right that's it so we'll leave the video there while I tidy up um, and we'll come back tomorrow when the oil arrives so that part was five minutes the other one was all oh, 13 so that only took that was well under half an hour I think about 20 25 minutes but I'll check the timings anyway see you in a sec So today is a beautiful day. Um, the air gap on these has to be 124 mils. So I've got my stick and I've made a little mark on it. At that distance, my gear oil's uh, hydraulic oil has arrived, so I'm good to go. A um, Couple of things to remember when you're filling up the oil, take the spring out. Uh, and when you start putting the oil in, make sure you um, do a very undignified up and down a few times on the uh, forks just to clear the air but that's it so uh, let's get on with it got the gear oil on wait just checking the timers already I can hear that the oil starting to get up there Perfect, just touching. Right, so then it's just spring, do it up properly, and jobs are good. Make sure I've not picked up any grass. One fork done. Right. So I'm going to do that on that one. No need to bore you with that. And we'll come back when we're um, just about to chuck them on the bike. So both forks are done, tightened up, ready to go back on the bike. So I'm going to do that now. Um, one thing I'm not going to be able to do today is complete the front because 
like an idiot I forgot to order new brake pads so I've done that now and uh, they're going to be a day or two so we'll have to wait for those but I'll get the forks back in situ yeah get the front wheel on and uh, yeah job will be a good one so we're ready to put the forks back in no big drama here exact opposite of taking them out do what a lot of people have trouble doing and find the hole and then you remember you didn't put the dust covers on good to remember now rather than later Leave that there a second. Oh, I hope I remember to cut this bit out. And that's perfect. There you go. And uh, this is one of the old brake pads, absolutely caked in fluid. So definitely, definitely needs new ones. All done. And a lot better than it was before. Right. There you go. Right, so I've matched it with the other one. So, oops, oh, some things everywhere. And that looks absolutely perfect. So, Alan keyed this time up. And uh, see where we are from there. Well, just skipping through this bit now because we're nearly there. Uh, it wasn't worth recording putting the, uh, the mud dug back on because. I wanted to change a couple of the fixings for better ones that won't give the next owner so much grief if this wheel ever needs to come off again. So, all I'm going to do now is stuck the uh, the bolt in for the wheel and then <coughs> drops are good as we're waiting on brake pads. So, just wanted to digress slightly. That is the brand new panel that I bought because that one was missing. That's the lid off of the glove box. Just to show the damage that UV does to panels over time. That's the original one on the other side. That's amazing, isn't it? Anyway, that one will be getting a nice coat of black very soon. But I um, thought that was worth showing. It was interesting, well, to me anyway. So the bike is back under its own weight and uh, looking very, very nice. So what's left to do? Well, I've got to torque up the, the bolts at the front, so I'm going to get my torque wrench out in a second. Um, wait for the brake pads. Like I said, they're going to be here next day or two, so we'll wait for that. I'm still waiting for the seat to be returned. I've had acknowledgement from the upholsterers that it's being done at this time. A um, little bit of spray to do down there just to make that look pretty and a bit of tidying up to do around the dashboard and then that will be it oh and a little bit of tape on the wind deflector so a couple of little jobs to do i got some um uh got uh, some paint just touch up paint so i've done the uh the scratches in the tank uh i'm going to give them another coat and then i'm going to just rub it back down with some probably 1200 grit and see if i can make them disappear as much as possible uh, I've done the same to the, the back but um, yep not bad so I'll come back to you shortly but this is almost there and so we are done on this so the timer showed 65 minutes that was without the other fork so we need to add on uh, say an hour and so an hour and 20 in total plus uh, plus double it so I reckon 
with getting the tools, if you had the right um, seal installer, you could quite easily do this as a novice in three hours um, and have it back on the road. So I hope that helped and I hope those timings are around about reasonable. Um, but the bike is, yeah, is, well, yeah, you probably noticed the seat's not there yet. I've just emailed them and hopefully it will be here in the next couple of days, but it's not worth waiting for that. I need to get this video out and I need to um, move on to the next project. So this one is done as much as it's going to be done. There are still a couple of bits to do, but I have painted the left-hand glove box cover now and it's a nice shade of black, matches the other one. A um, little bit of teacup, the seat on, and it's good to go. So I do hope you've avoided, uh, avoided this video. No, don't avoid this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, that's it from me. And I will see you on the next project. Thanks, guys. Bye.